to Horror Month here on Box Office Maniacs and it's 2018 and it's October and we are just unloading as many horror films into your face as we can. And tonight is no exception because I have, this is from Arrow and as you can see this thing is a brick. It literally is. It's like if you throw this at somebody you'd probably knock them out. I did an unboxing on this so a while back and the, the packaging spectacular and Arrow does the very best packaging. I'm sorry Scream Factory but they do. The artwork on this it's solid. It comes in its own case. It has a booklet with it. It has a poster with it. It has you know the gigantic um, case with it with all the discs. Fantastic packaging here Arrow. You did a great job with this. Now back in the day before all the fancy internets and the you know things that we have today that tells you what movies are and where they are and how to get them and who made them we didn't have any of that stuff. So we kinda had to explore and find movies on our own. So when Nightmare on Elm Street came out I instantly became a Wes Craven fan so I wanted to see what else he had done. So I started going back into his library and found out at that point he hadn't really done that much. <laughs> he, did the, he did The Hills Have Eyes which I watched and absolutely loved that movie. I think then at that point I watched Last House on the Left. I think a lot of people whose parents went to go see this movie talks about this movie a lot because I hear about that all the time. Oh my parents went and seen this movie that's how I heard about it and they kept talking about it and that's how I heard about this. My mom and my dad went to go see this at a drive-in when they were dating, I believe. <laughs> and uh, she's always talked about, it. oh, that movie, Last House on the Left, I can't believe he went to go see that. Oh, I can't believe he went to go see it. And it's one of those films that, you know, just sticks into your memory. I had seen this a long time ago. I couldn't even tell you the last time I watched the movie. It's been a long, 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 long time ago. So when Arrow released it, I was like, oh man, I would like to get it because it's what's Craven, it's his first film. And so obviously I went out and bought the special super edition brick of Last House. Now I sat there and watched the film <laughs> and I gotta tell you I'm, I'm gonna be completely brutally honest here with you guys. I didn't like the movie at all. I, it was not a good film. It did not hold up to being a good film and in fact I don't know if it, it was ever a good film. Now I know a lot of people might be yelling at me about this or disagree with me about this because it was a groundbreaking thing and everybody was upset about it and it's what made Wes Craven's career and all this but as a whole it wasn't very good. And there are several reasons why this movie wasn't very good. Reason one, the acting was horrendous in this film. It was just horrendous. What do you want to be? Frog. You look like a frog. I had my own lily pad. I could sit there all day long, just rip it. I could watch it fly. And reason two was the directing. I'm sorry, Wes Craven. The directing was awful in this movie. It was horrible. Now the actual story itself wasn't bad. The idea behind the story wasn't bad. How they actually portrayed it on the film was bad. Anyone not familiar with this movie, which I don't know how many of you out there are not familiar with this, is about these two girls who go out to have a party and they wanted to, some pot. So they end up seeing this guy on the street and they're like, hey you got any pot? They go up to this guy's apartment and they lock the door and there's um, three other, there's three guys and one woman there and they they capture him and they kidnap him and they take him out in the woods and they end up killing the one girl and then they end up raping the other girl and then they end up killing the other girl so it's sort of you know it is it's one of those it's supposed to be really real looking it's supposed to be raw it's supposed to be you know like almost like it actually happened and you're watching it and I understand all of that I get all of that but when something is just so badly done it's like you know I don't know I, I don't know what to say about that it's just it's it's almost unwatchable because it's so bad oh yeah the other thing that made this movie really bad for me was the music <laughs> 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 
It's like, that's kind of music. It's like Benny Hill music going on. And the guy that played Krug in this movie is the one who actually did the, the soundtrack. It's the most horrible soundtrack ever. It does not go with the movie. And they wanted to put some weird soundtrack in there to shock the audience because they're like, okay, well, they're not going to be expecting this. No, I was not expecting it, and I don't want it. I don't want... You know, it's like... <laughs> what? What is, is this terrible sounding music? It's like... And Krug actually sings the songs in this, too. So it's like... That's bad. And, and the music really pulls you out of the movie. If, if the music had been somewhat better, the, the film may have worked on some kind of level, but no, it, it doesn't because of that. And they literally made this movie in their backyard. So you can watch a movie like Night of Living Dead where they also had no budget. They were literally sleeping on the floor in their house just to get the movie done. They were getting locals in diners to be uh, zombies in the film. You can see a movie like that and it turns out like it did and is a classic. Now this, there's no excuse for it. I mean, oh, well, he's first time director. He a lot of people do that. And, he, and, he, and you still can produce something that's not complete crap. So, yeah, I, you can see I was really disappointed in watching this film. And not only was there one version of this film, there's like 18 freaking versions of this movie on here. And the one thing I really didn't want was the soundtrack to this movie. But Arrow actually includes it in the box set, so you get to listen to the whoop da da doo whoop da doo 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 whoop da doo doo you know, on <laughs> the soundtrack in here. I did listen to the soundtrack one time, just because I was curious. One time. Arrow goes overboard with extras. And again, that's why I love the company. And the extras in this box set are ridiculous. They're ridiculous. It's taken me months, and I'm not even joking, months to get through the extras here. So uh, hopefully it's not going to take me a month to bring them to you. I'm going to try to make them as short as I possibly can. So here we go. Here is the ridiculous amount of extras. So the first extra is a commentary by these two podcasters, the man and a woman, and I thought it was terrible. I actually couldn't even make it all the way through it because they talk so fast and it's like, oh, and they don't breathe. They don't have any pauses. It's a complete opposite of some of the stuff that you usually, you know, want is somebody talking. They talk too much. And then they start going on rants about the actors in the movie. And they'll just start talking about the actors and where they came from and what they were doing now and who they are. And you just kind of zone out. And 30 minutes later, when you zone back in, they're still talking about the same thing. So it was a pretty terrible commentary. So commentary two was actually with Wes Craven and Sean Cunningham the two that made this movie. And when it first starts out, they're just joking. They're just sort of joking, you know, making fun of the movie. But towards the middle to, to the end, they start getting a little bit more serious about it. And it's an okay commentary. I mean, it's all right. They basically filmed the movie in Sean Cunningham's house. That was his house that was in the film. And he turned the camera just to the left, because it's the house on the left. But you turn the camera over, and there's a wooded area right across the street from his house. That's where they filmed in. They just literally went across the street and they filmed in the woods over there next to his house. Now, commentary three is with all the crazy people in the film, the, the nut jobs. Uh, David Hess, Mark Scheffler, and Fred Lincoln, the three bad guys in the film. This is their commentary. And this was an interesting commentary because they talked down about this film. None of them really liked it, especially, I think it was um, the Fred Lincoln just talked about how Wes Craven didn't know what he was doing how he was a bad director, how he was trying to get him to direct the movie better and he wouldn't listen to him, and, and they just kind of tore the movie apart the whole entire time you're watching it. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, the actual actors in the film realize how terrible the film is. I mean, <laughs> it was an okay commentary. So this next one is from 2009. It's called Still Standing, The Legacy of the Last House on the Left. Wes Craven basically comes on here and talks about how he came up with the idea, how he wrote the movie, 
and the audience's reactions to the film. He also talks about, and they talk about this a lot. Again, this is a lot of repeating in this, lots and lots of repeating. Now, while I love Arrow, I said this on countless reviews I've done of theirs, is yes, they have extras. They have tons and tons of extras on here, but probably 75% of it is stuff people are just saying over and over and over and over again. So every extra, you hear the same thing, and there's a lot of that in this. And like the one thing they talk about a lot is how he doesn't turn the camera away. It's like when a woman is getting raped, he kept the camera on her. And it's like when you're filming something like that for a movie or for a TV, you know, you're always supposed to move it away so you don't see what actually happens. But he, it's like, well, that's not real life. I wanted to feel like real life. I wanted the camera to be focused on, on what's happening here. And I understand that. It's, it's a cool idea. It's a cool concept. Just badly done. So next is Celluloid, Crime of the Century. Now again, this is an actually interesting one because there was a movie that had come out and was called Tall Virginia Springs, I think the name of it was. And I never heard of it and I guess no one else has ever heard of it, but apparently Wes Craven had heard of it because he watched it. And the story of this is exactly the same story as Last House on the Left, where these people kidnap these girls, they go out to the woods, they rape them, then, you know, I don't want to spoil the movie for you because you still want to watch it. <laughs> but the the actual plot of the film is that movie. So it's like, okay, so he just stole the plot to this tall Virginia Slims whatever and, and remade it to his own film. Which is what it sounded like to me. I mean, that's literally what it sounded like. And Sean Cunningham comes in here. And Sean Cunningham comes in here and he gets his two cents in. Martin Cove comes in here and he talks as well. And there's some like some typing across the screen. It's just terrible. It's really hard to see what is even written. But actually it's a good extra for the fact that you realize there's no original ideas out there. And here is scoring Last House. And this was filmed back in 2002 and uh, Krug is on here talking about how he scored the film. David Hess is his actual name. It was alright. Again, it's okay. As I was saying in the review, he wanted some weird music, some shocking music, some music that people wouldn't wouldn't um, understand why it was in the film, and I don't. He, he successfully uh, did that. I don't understand. I don't understand, David Hess. So now we have forbidden footage, and this is all the footage that was taken out of the film because it was too shocking. Now, the first copy of it, the first one they have on here, is the uncut version. So when you're watching this, this is the complete uncut version of the movie. And again, like I said, there's like four versions of the movie on here. But the very first one on here is the actual unedited version of the movie. So Junior's story is up next, and this is the <laughs> this is the guy that did it for me. This is this is the guy that did it for me in the movie. Um, he was horrible in this film. He the acting from this guy is about as bad as as, as it gets. Literally, it's as bad as it gets. And he sits and talks about how he got the job for Junior. And it's actually more entertaining than the movie, to tell you the truth. So now we have Blood and Guts. And this is a interview with a woman who did the effects, if you want to call them any kind of effects, in Last House. And this was filmed in 2018, so it's a recent one. She talks about how she lied to Wes and told him, Oh yeah, I have 10 years of experience in special effects. I can do anything you need to. Never did special effects in her life. She completely lied her way into the movie which I guess you can kind of see while watching it. The road leads to terror. Now, this is supposed to be like the poor man's hollow grounds, I guess. <laughs> where these two guys go out to the location and they're walking around showing you where the movie took place at. And it's all right. It's it's just kind of like, oh, okay. You know, I miss Sean Clark. I miss hollow grounds. Obviously, that's more of a screen factory, but I have seen him on other on other companies. But now that he became popular doing that, other people try to do it, and it's just not as entertaining. So this is the next one is the deleted scene, and it is a spoiler for the movie. So I'm not going to talk about it. So now we have the outtakes, and there's no sound here, and it's just a bunch of people running around out in the woods. <laughs> showing you how they film this movie, basically. And that's what it is. It's literally just a bunch of people running around, no sound. It's pretty boring. And what runs off this disc are the trailers and the galleries. So now we get to disc two. <laughs> and now here we get the uh, a different version of the movie. It's the Krug and Company cut is what it's called. This is the R-rated version, I believe, of Last House. And there's a couple extended scenes, a couple more uh, scenes of violence. 
And, you know, they, they cu basically cut out all the rape of scenes and the more shocking things. I mean, if you want to watch, I don't know why when anyone, if you have the original version, I guess purists want to have every version of it so they can show their friends, look, here's the original version. No, no, you're not done. Here's the R-rated version. No, 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 you're not done. Here's the extended version. No, no, you're not done. Here's... <laughs> So, I don't know, it's it's okay. So the next one is the Craven Touch, and this is the new extra. And it's um, basically sort of a, like a tribute to Wes Craven, and it has Sean Cunningham on here. And I think there was an actress on here from the first Nightmare, and the composer for the first Nightmare. And they're talking about Wes Craven, and it's actually a pretty good retrospective on him. Early Days and Nights of Vengeance. Okay, this is somewhat interesting. There's a guy named Roy Frumpkus. Frumpkus? And he had a script from Wes Craven. And he talks about a movie that he was supposed to make with Wes Craven. It sounded interesting, to tell you the truth. Um, and he actually went out and filmed some of it. And I don't know what happened to the movie. I don't really remember right now. But for whatever reason, the guy didn't get the movie done and it was never finished. So what we get on the next extra is the tales that will rip your heart out. This is a movie that he was supposed to make with Wes Craven. And Krug is actually in this movie. And with this show here, there's no sound, and it's just terrible. It's absolutely horrible. It's really, 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 really bad. So now we get into more of the repeat stuff. This is Mark Scheffler, the guy that played Junior. And he's on stage, and he's on here a lot. And he actually, when he's not in this movie, and you see him in person, he actually has a pretty good personality. He, he seems like a pretty okay guy. So I don't know what happened <laughs> in the film. But here he's on stage doing a bunch of Q&A questions. And... It's all right. Here's once it starts repeating again. This starts with lots of repeats going on here. So you're gonna start hearing the same things that he's already said in the other interviews. Songs in the key of Krug. Again, more of the same of Krug talking about how he wanted to shock people with his music. I've already heard this Krug. You know, come up with something new. You know, <laughs> but that's what this extra was. So the next one here is Krug conquers the UK. And this movie had been banned in the UK for a long time. So finally they released it to where people in the UK could finally see it. It was actually in the movie theaters. Even though they talk about, well, we've had it ever since the movie came out. You know, we've had it in some versions on, on illegal videotapes and, or videotapes. And everybody's already, who wanted, anyone who ever wanted to see the movie had already seen it. That's what I'm saying. Just because they pulled it out of the movie theaters doesn't mean the fans of the films would never be able to see it. So this is the first time they've officially showed it in the, the theaters there. And Krug is on there talking about, you know, the film again, and again, more repeats. So finally, the last one here is about Krug once again. And he was a singer, believe it or not. And he did the music for Last House, believe it or not. And here, he's talking about the music and his singing career. And he actually gets on here with a guitar and he starts wailing on the guitar, starts singing. And it's kind of hard to hear him. It's like... I mean, that's kind of like what it sounds like. So you can't really hear what he's singing. But again, this is in the UK, and he was there. I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre was showing there as well, because Gunnar Hansen was there. And he was sitting next to Gunnar Hansen and was doing autographs with him and stuff. So it was okay. It was all right. I did not know my air conditioning was on. I did not know it was turned on. So it sounds, probably sounds like I'm an airplane. But that's it. It was a really impressive disc with a ton of extras. And if you're one of the people out there who really love this movie, you're going to love this disc. I mean, there's nothing that I can complain about except for the repeats. Lots of repeats on the extras. But as for the film quality, it's grainy. I mean, again, I know that's what they had to work with. But it's sort of like looking through an old grainy filter. It's just nothing but grain all over the entire, entire top of the, of the picture. And again, yeah, I understand, you know, they cleaned it up the best they could. So it'll probably, this is probably the best it's going to ever look, to tell you the truth. But if you are a huge fan of Lifestyles on the Left, you will love this release. You will absolutely love it. Now, back in the day, I thought I liked the movie until I watched it recently. And I'm just like, oh, what is this? What, what is this? So, yeah, I don't know if you'd have the same reaction. If you haven't seen it for a while, then put it on and try to watch it now. If you have, please let me know in the comment sections. Because I love hearing from you, and I, I want to know if I'm the only one who thinks this movie is terrible. Am I the only one who thinks it's terrible? <laughs> so overall, movie-wise, I would give this... A 2 out of 5. 
As for the actual discs, it gets a 5 out of 5. It's really good. It's really, really good, but it has a lot of repeats, like a lot of the Arrow releases have had recently. Uh, a good example is Reanimator. Love the Reanimator release, but it just to hear the same stories 45 times, you get kind of tired. Hopefully you guys will want to become one of our maniacs here on Horror Month for this month. If you do, hit that subscribe button because we love to have you here and we love all of our maniacs and I will see you next time here on Horror Month.